created for glory. Now look at this, please, people of God. There are a few things I wanted to know. One of the key purpose of God calling us, if not the most important purpose, you know, everything that happened in our lives of God orchestrated even the events that we consider insignificant. The, the, the birth, our growing up, everything, our salvation, everything, if it were to be put into one particular uh, purpose, and that purpose would be glory, for His glory. That God's name will be glorified through us. That's the key. That's the only reason. Every event that happens, sometimes we have got a way of reducing or simplifying even the answer to our prayers as something that God did in order to cater to our need. Of course, it was to, to comfort us. It was to do a miracle to, to bring some kind of comfort to our situation. Of course, I believe that. But at the end of the day, it's not just to answer your prayer and to take care of your need that God did a miracle. It's to do with His glory. Even the answers of your prayers has to do with His glory. The moment we, we don't understand that, that powerful truth, I think we have lost it. I think we have lost it quite, quite humongously. We have lost it. I want to give two, three passages. Isaiah 43, verse number 6 and 7. This is a prophetic word. Isaiah 43, 6 and 7. I want you to look at that, please. I will say to the north, give up, and to south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, my daughters from the ends of the earth. Seven. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I felt the Lord pointing his finger at me personally and telling me on my face, the reason I have created you is for my glory. I think we need to get this clear into our spirits. He's looking at each one of you. And he's saying, the reason I've called you, I've created you, is for my glory. I've formed him, yeah, I've made him. Can you read Ephesians 1, 6 and 7? Even as salvation, which had its origin, not in the confinement of time, but in the expanse of eternity. Look at this. To the praise of, of His grace. Can you read? Uh, okay. Where He is, is made as accepted in the beloved. Next to the praise of His glory. He says, you know, it says how He formed us even before the foundations of the earth was laid. How He saw us in eternity. And how He had a plan, a predestined plan for our lives. But He says, I did all that is for my glory. To the praise of of his glory. Now what does that mean? That means at the end of the day when people see us. When they see a miracle in our lives. They should say your God is an awesome God. Amen. They should say your God is a great God. How many of you know when Pharaoh saw the wonder of God. When Israel saw the greatness of God. They gave glory to God. Let me make this very clear. I want to make a statement of an important consequential you know, significance. Listen to this. God says everything that I'm going to do in your life is going to bring a glory to my name. And people are going to say great is your God. Can I get a shout of amen in the house of the Lord? How many of you want to say let my God be glorified through my life? If you believe that, lift up your voice and say an amen in the house of the Lord. Let my God be glorified in my life. Now look at this. Jesus made it very clear. He said when you do good works good works remember matthew 5 16 you're doing good works not to showcase yourself but jesus said let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven even the good works that god enables you to do is to do with the glory of a heavenly father am i am i preaching to the right congregation here yes there we go. Amen. Look at what prayer. Jesus said about prayer. Why is God answering your prayer? John 14 and 13. John 14 and 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, 
that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son even the answer to your prayers and this morning i felt the lord speaking to my heart if you can associate the answer to your prayer not to your temporal you know blessing or temporal comfort but to the ultimate purpose of bringing glory to heavenly father you are going to see miracles happen in your life in the days to come can i get a witness somewhere here but your prayer is answered not to make you feel better but to bring glory to your heavenly father how many of you want to say god when this prayer is answered i want people to say my god is a great god i want my family to rejoice and give glory to my heavenly only father let me go ahead please your prayer is answered in order to bring glory to god how many of you know the bible says in everything that you do eating or drinking or whatever you do first corinthians 10:31 first corinthians 10:31 please wherefore you eat or drink or, or whatsoever you do do all to the glory of god listen if somebody asked me is it okay to go to a bar and get drunk you know what if you can give glory to the lord and i don't think anybody is going to come and say wow his god must be a great god <laughs> nobody is going to come and look at you and say wow his god is a great god when you are almost stumbling you know you're fumbling your way out of the bar let me tell you it doesn't matter there's a simple principle it's not about rules and regulations and laws and sometimes we get tied up with the lo- rules and laws let me make it very simple today whatever you do eat or drink or friendship or relationship marriage or anything that you do let it be for the glory of god can i get a shout of amen in the house of the lord how many of you want to say god let my life bring glory to your heavenly father if you believe that shout an amen even your job even your ch- children even your marriage even every, everything that you do let it be for the glory of god how many of you want to declare today my life is completely set apart for the glory of god hey, hallelujah 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 let me make this very clear let me jesus said john 17:25 i love that jesus said in john 17:24 father i will that they also whom thou was given me is talking about you and me be with me where i am that they may behold my glory god says i'm inviting you to be in my presence that you can see my glory more than you desiring god to act on your behalf god is eager to show his glory hallelujah oh you didn't hear me that more than you desire a miracle from god god is eager to show his glory god says if you are in my presence you're going to see my glory how many of you want to say god i want to see your glory you know what is glory glory means things that are hidden are going to bec- become quite you know conspicuous it's going to be visible it's not it's not just a feeling that everything is going to be fine you are going to see things becoming fine you are going to see on the outside miracles happen call unto me says the lord in jeremiah 33:3 and i will show you let me tell you the time of just believing and and contemplating and reflecting on on something good that might happen to you is coming to an end that's not it all but let me tell you very clearly god says i want to go beyond that and every time you call unto me i want to show you i want to show you let me tell you in the days to come there's going to be visible miracles visible miracles visible manifestations of god if you believe that can you lift up your voice and shout a hallelujah glory has to do with the revealed revealed act of god not just a hidden act of god it's a revealed act of god that's what glory means let me tell you the bible says everything that happens in your life will work together for his glory 
Even the bad things that you might have dismissed as things that has no consequence in your life. Let me tell you, God is going to put everything together. If you are a man, woman serving God, God says in the days to come, even the worst thing that happened in your life, He is going to turn around and will shine forth for the glory of God. If you believe that, can you put your hands together? Give a Lord a shout of praise in the house of a Lord. But let me ask you this, as a church, as individuals, as families, may I implore to you this morning, implore before you, are you ready to give a a, a response to this particular truth? If you're willing, will you do it as, as loud and as most powerful as you can? Every blessing that God gives you, every blessing, it's not for you to to, 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 to gloat and to enjoy the blessing. You have to enjoy, but that's not the ultimate purpose. Every blessing that you get is connected to His glory. Now I'm going to bring that passage and I'm going to spray that. It'll stick into our spirits. It'll be embedded in our spirit, in every fiber of our being. We'll be able to acknowledge the, the veracity of that truth. Now listen to me, please. Isaiah 60, 21. I want some of you young people receive it. This is going to determine your future. Isaiah 60, 21. Look at this. Every blessing that you get is connected to his glory. Isaiah 60, 21. Can you read from 22? A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Next word. Look at the blessing that's going to come. 21. The people, thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Every move of God that's going to happen in your life is connected to one purpose, to bring glory to God. If you want that to be your life, can you make your response known in the house of the Lord? Everything, every blessing, my anointing, my ministry, come on, hallelujah, my future, my My job, my finance, every blessing is going to be connected to the glory of God. If you believe that, can you lift up your voice and shout a hallelujah? It's for the glory of God. Let God be glorified. Amen. Can I read one more passage? I'm in 61.3. This is a prophetic word. Please receive it. 61.3. Some of you are going to receive. Oh, this is a prophetic word. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Some of you need that. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of a Lord that he might be glorified. God says I'm going to turn your mourning into dancing. I'm going to turn your ashes into beauty. I'm going to anoint your head with oil. But for one purpose that God might be glorified. Come on if you believe that. Oh, can you tell the devil this afternoon, every blessing that's going to be released into my life, he is going to bring glory to my heavenly father. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, this is powerful. But I want to bring a truth here. How many of you know the first place where the Bible says Jesus started to show forth his glory, manifest his glory, is with that miracle. I want to go there for a few minutes and then I'm done for today. His glory. I want to know, I want you to know how God releases His glory. What is the setting in which the glory is released? Are you going through that? Are you in that place? If you are, I want to encourage you this afternoon. Because there are some key salient features as far as the setting goes where God releases His glory. Are you with me? The first place where it says about Jesus showing forth his glory is when he turned the water into wine at the wedding of Canaan. The Bible says in John chapter 2, John chapter 2, verse number 11, please. This beginning of miracles that Jesus did in Canaan of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And his disciples believed in him. I want to bring three important truths and I'm done for today. Number one. 
I have found many a times when God reveals his glory, he will take a situation where people think it's over. Where he will exhaust everything possible in the natural. Because glory comes when your power is brought to nothing. From that point, God will start to show his power. The mother of Jesus went to Jesus and said, it's over. The wine is over. It's over. Every time you hear the word over, the Bible says, get ready. Because when you think you cannot do it, I'm going to show my power. Can I get a witness somewhere here? When you think it's not possible, you know what? When our church, not Eve, when our church gets our building, it'll be for the glory of the Lord. Because we can say joyfully, it is not our strength. It is not our finance. It's not that we were smart, but God did this miracle for us. How many of you are going through a situation when things are looking bad? God says, when things are looking bad, get ready. I'm about to show forth my power and reveal my glory. If you believe that, lift up your voice and shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. God will reveal his glory when you feel you are weak. Now listen, people of God, listen carefully. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 43. 1 Corinthians 15, 43. Some of you need to receive it. 1 Corinthians 15, 43. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Everything that is sown in weakness will come back will be raised some of you are sowing in tears some of you are sowing in pain your worship is a sowing your praise is a sowing your prayer is a sowing your faith declaration is a sowing but God says very soon there's going to be a resurrection of glory in the name of Jesus if you believe that shout hallelujah whatever is sown in dishonor is going to be raised in glory Oh, Rabbi Shande. The Lord is showing me a vision right now. There are some people in this church that have been going through some very, very difficult situation where they don't even want to let others know about it. They're not telling this to anybody. They're keeping it quiet to themselves. They don't even know whether it's good for people to hear about it. They feel ashamed to do it. But in the midst of it, they are sowing. They are praying. They are fasting. They are declaring. They are declaring their faith. And God says, very soon, you are going to come out in glory. You're going to shh. Oh, come on, somebody who believes your life will come out with glory. If you can believe that, can you give a Lord the best praise in the house of a Lord, somebody? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at this, this is a beautiful word that God spoke to my heart. How many of you know, this is a prophetic word. Some of you need to move out of your comfort zone of conventional praise and move into something that is extraordinary that might make people think you're crazy. But that's okay for today because there's a prophetic word for your life. Listen closely, the Lord told me anytime the word glory comes, there's another word that is attached to it. Oh, come on. Do you want to know that word? Oh, you didn't hear me. Do you really want to know that word? That will be, anytime the word glory comes, you can be sure that this will be the word that will be associated with it. Can I give you two references here? Number one, Exodus 28 and verse number two. Exodus 28 and verse number two. Amen. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty. Anytime you see the word glory, there's another word called beauty. Ha. Come on, hallelujah. I came all the way catching a flight out of the way in order to tell you your life when glory will come will be made beautiful in the name of Jesus somebody shout a hallelujah it will be made beautiful 
Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on, hallelujah. I see the Lord. Come on, this is powerful. I see the Lord removing some of the things that need to go out of your life and refining your life and making it beautiful. In the days to come, your family will become beautiful. Your future will become beautiful. Oh, come on, hallelujah. Somebody receive it. I see people have gone through broken life, destroyed life, dismantled life, lives that didn't make any sense. You are falling apart. You didn't even know how to hold it together. But this is a prophetic word. If you believe in the glory of God, if you believe in God reveals his glory, he'll be an answer to your prayer. If you believe that, can you declare in the face of all disappointment that your life will become beautiful in the name of Jesus. Hey. Come on, somebody read. I'll give you one more passage. You know, Isaiah 28, verse number 5. Isaiah 28, verse number 5. One more passage. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty. Anytime you see the word, the Lord is speaking to somebody. Your life in the past has been, has gone through the mill, through the grinder. And then it becomes so falling apart and torn into pieces where there's no cohesiveness of purpose anymore in your life. But God says there's a truth coming from God's throne. When my glory is revealed, your life will not be in shambles anymore. Your life will be made beautiful by the hand of God. If there's somebody who believes that, can you put your hands together? Give a Lord a shout of praise in the house of a Lord. Somebody declare beauty. Glory is connected to beauty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Lamb of God. Why does God use a weakness? In order to portray his, his power of glory. Let me tell you the word is power. The word is power. When you cannot do it, you're going to see the power of God. How many of you know it's a power of God that reveals his glory? I, I, can you read please Exodus 15.1. Exodus 15.1. When the children of Israel knew that there's no way they can cross the Red Sea. God brought in such a miracle and made the, the Egyptians to be sunk in the Red Sea. And when people of God saw this, they sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto Lord and spoke I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously let me tell you when you see the power of God released through your to your life you are going to declare God has triumphed gloriously God has triumphed gloriously can you give a praise in advance Knowing for sure that God will reveal his glory. If you believe that, can you declare today in spite of the impossibility, my God is going to triumph gloriously. It will... Oh, come on, somebody. It will not be an ordinary miracle. It will be an extraordinary miracle. It will be about the power of God. Hallelujah to Lamb of God. Let me go ahead. But this is a second truth. I wanted to take your seat for a minute or two. This is important. This is the key of it. You know, first of all, God uses weakness. How many of you know the Bible says when Stephen, when Stephen was pelted with all those stones and he was dying he was dying it is the most weakest moment of that man's life he opened his eyes and saw the heavens open and he saw the glory of God let me tell you in the most painful moments of your life get ready to see the glory of God Or you didn't hear that. Some of you need to declare your faith in the house of a Lord. In the worst situation of your life. In the most painful situation of your life. Get ready to see the glory of a Lord. But this is what the Lord told me. I want to say this. Because this is the principle behind it. How many of you know when God revealed his glory the Bible says. There were some things that happens in the background. How many of you know when for God to show his glory, most of the people will see the visible manifestation of glory. But many people will not see what took place behind the scene. The Bible says God showed his glory in that miracle at the wedding of Cana. But only... The servants knew 
Where did this come from? Mary knew. The governor of the feast didn't know. The owner of the house didn't know. But the servants knew. God says behind every manifested glory. There's a story. Which only the people that walked it will know. I'm not talking about the expressions that you show forth in the church. I'm talking about the quiet moments. The lonely times in your house. When you're driving there, you do, some of you don't even know where you're driving to. Sometimes it's so painful, you don't even know, have no clue as to what's going to happen. But even in those moments, you're trusting the Lord. You're walking a walk which is not visible to anybody. Even the pastor will not know about it. Even the people around you will not know about it. It's your own secret. But God says that secret is what's going to release the glory in the days to come. Can I get... People see you smile. They think that you are having everything hale and hearty. Everything is fine. Everything is good. But you know that times how you cry out in the night. When nobody is watching you. God says for every secret prayer. Every secret tears that you shed. Very soon. The glory. But the Lord told me something. When you have that secret moment. With God. There are two or three things that you should never, never ignore. Never discount it. It's a key. Number one. Faith. Combined with obedience. Can you imagine? We all talk about glory and have God as the answer prayer. But here is a woman. Who says. Do exactly what he asked you to do. She believed. And here are some servants. When he called them and said, take that water. I'm sure the miracle happened as they took the water. The hands are trembling. Can you imagine if they were to go and give this dirty water, dirty water into the hands of the governor of the feast? Can you imagine? This dirty water that people wash feet with into the hands of the governor. Every moment, the heart is palpitating. There's a tense moment. But just because he said, they did it. They're walking in faith. God says, I need somebody. The only people are going to see my glory. Who will believe I'm able. And will believe my word. Can I get an amen in the house of the Lord? Things look impossible. But your heart tells you. Nothing is impossible. My God is able. My God can do everything. My God can do everything. He can turn impossible into possibility. Can I get somebody in this house who believe all things are possible to your God? Can I get a shout of amen in the house of the Lord? Of those who believe my God can do everything. Come on, hallelujah. This is for those who believe. And Jesus said, if you believe, you shall see the glory of God. This is a prayer. This is what he said to Mary and Martha. Your brother is dead. He's dead for four days. But if you believe, you shall see the glory of God oh let me make it very gentle there's no provoking here but there's a gentle gentle persuasion can I ask you something how many of you want to declare today yes God it's stinking yes God it's dead and past the due of, of, of any possibility of a miracle four days is in the grave but I believe that you are the resurrection and the life I believe my God can still do a miracle only those people can you make your voice to be heard in the house of the Lord can somebody believe my God is able if you believe even at this point of time you shall see the glory of God somebody receive it in the name of Jesus. Huda Rabashandala Rabashande.
God says, you know, what's our problem? We preach, we believe, we say declaration. But when it comes to real matters, when it comes to the time where it's tested, we drop the ball. We completely give up. But God says, still, you hand over. Jesus did not say to smell the water. He didn't say drink and see if the water's turned to wine. He just gave you a command. Take the water and give it to the governor. That's all what matters. You have no right to change his word. If God says, do it. If God God says believe it. How many of you are willing to say God in spite of all the questions that have been raised in my heart I believe my God can do it. Come on. Can I get a shout of amen in the house of the Lord. How many of you believe my God can do it. If you believe that shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now listen those of you standing remain standing. Let me just push this point a little further. One thing the Lord told me very clearly. And I don't even know how many of you are going to accept this. How many of you? Because I'm, I know I'm preaching in a rational land. I'm not preaching in Africa. I'm, I'm not preaching in India. I'm preaching in a place where people think they know things. People think everything is rational. The Lord told me something very powerful. An alternative. When God says something. Will kill the miracle. I repeat those words. When God says something. If you look for an alternative. It will kill the miracle. You know what we do? We believe God. But we have an alternative plan B. If Mary said. Okay Jesus you do your part. And I will do. I will try to get some wine from somewhere. Let me see if neighbors have got some wine. I'll do my part. You know what? You cannot expect a miracle. You cannot expect Jesus to do a miracle when you have, you're working on an alternative plan B. Let me tell you, if you have handed it over to him, let him have the final word. Let him complete the work. Come on, how many of you believe that? When God says it, I am going to believe for a miracle. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah. There is no alternative. You know, I heard this this time. Let me tell you, people of God, while standing in in Dubai, in, 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 in Delhi, you know, knowing that my pouch is gone, my alternative is to go to the to the to the consulate consulate of of Canada in New Delhi and get uh, the visa. You know, I, that's my alt- I'm already working on that because I'm a traveler. I have to find what's B plan, C plan. I'm working on all that. All of a sudden, I heard a voice in my spirit. That alternative is removed. You cannot have that alternative. Now I have to believe God to dispatch my passport or my document without even knowing where it is. I didn't know where it is. I didn't know where, if I'm going to get it. But the Lord said, you're not going to have an alternative. You're going to believe God. Let me tell you, when God says something, I decided to change my language. From that moment onwards, I didn't even tell people that there's something that, that, that can happen alternatively. I believe God is going to give it. How many of you want to say, when God says something, I've got no alternative but to believe in Him. Can I get a shout of Amen? Those of you are willing to say, when God says something, let Him finish the work. If you're willing to say that, put your hands together. Them. Give a Lord a shout of praise in the house of a Lord. God is about to do a miracle. But I'm going to pray right now. I'll read this verse and I'm going to pray. Romans 9.23. Can you read it together? Romans 9.23. This is beautiful. God has appointed you that he might make known the riches of his glory. On the vessels of mercy. Now if you go back into the passage. There are two words. Either you are a vessel of wrath. An object of wrath. Anger of God. Or you are a vessel of mercy. Now let me make this very clear once for all. Let it, let it be categorically stated. How many of you believe. God has chosen me. As a vessel of mercy. No, 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 no. If you really believe that, I could have been killed, I could have been destroyed by God's wrath, but God took me out of wrath and poured His mercy upon my life. Not because I deserve it, because of Jesus. If you believe that, can you make yourself known in the house of the Lord? How? Oh, come on, hallelujah. Can somebody lift up your voice and declare you are an object of mercy? Come on, if you believe, there's only two choices. Either you're an object of God's wrath or you're an object of God's mercy. Can I hear the voice of people who believe that you are an object of God's mercy? 
Come on, you can do better. Do you really believe it's not for wrath, but for mercy? God has shown his mercy upon my life. If you believe that, can the objects of mercy make a shout of joy in the house of the Lord? Is anybody an object of mercy willing to look at another object of mercy and say, I'm an object of mercy? Look at your neighbor. That means everything that is happening. Come on, you can test it. I'm alive today because of his mercy. His mercy is new every morning. So can I hear the voice of people who believe? I don't deserve it, but God is merciful. I'm here because of God's mercy. Can I get a witness somewhere here? If this is your story, there's only one result allotted for your life. Only one result. If you are an object of mercy, God has already ordained you to show forth His glory. No matter what you go through, the glory of God is going to come out of your life. Can you shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? You're going to carry, oh, come on, hallelujah. You're going to carry the glory of God. Your family is going to carry the glory of God. Every situation you're praying today is going to become the glory of God. Can you lift up your voice and shout an amen in the house of the Lord? The glory of God. The Lord told me something. Come on, people of God. If you want to step out for a minute for prayer, you can do it. It's only, it's going to be gone in, in over in two minutes. Listen to this. In in the Old Testament, God made Israel. Moses built a tabernacle with all intrinsic details. With such intricacy, he made that tabernacle. The gold and the, and the silver. The purple and the blue and every color clearly specified. And then God said, you know what? I'm going to reveal my glory. You know, the tabernacle became the place where God will show his glory. And every time people saw the glory, they will fall on their face and worship God. And the Lord told me in the New Testament... He has not made a tabernacle. He has created you. He has created me. He has made you. He has chosen me to show his glory. Come on, somebody who believes that. Shout a hallelujah in the house of Allah. Come on, hallelujah. Every situation that's going to happen in your life, people are going to say, your God is great. Your God is my mighty. Your God is a miracle working God. Can I say this? With this, we're going to pray and close. Do you really believe that you're not an object of wrath? You're an object of mercy. Yes. Come on, please. Do you re- this is only for those people. Do you really believe that? If that's your case, God says there's only one, one destination for you. No two destination. Everything that happens in your life must be for his glory. You know what it means? Can I say this? Some of you receive it as a prophetic word. Pastor, working in Bihar, when you carry God's glory, you enter any place, people will see the glory. They will see your God working through you. And every situation in your life becoming about His glory. In the Old Testament, they fell on their face and worshipped God. God says, you are going to make people bow before the Lord. Your relatives are going to call upon the Lord. Your friends are going to say, your God is a great God. When they see the glory of God. How many of you in this place can declare joyfully today, everything that happens in my life is not going to give credit and honor to the devil, but it will bring glory. Come on, if you believe that, Give a Lord a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. You are created for glory. Your life will bring glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I ask everybody to stand up please? Shall we pray and close? I want everybody to say this prayer in your heart. Everything, even the most painful thing in my life. God is going to turn it around for his glory. You know, people are not going to look at your life and say, look, she served God and look what God did to her. No way. People are going to look at your life and say, look what the Lord has done. 
Can you imagine? Can you imagine this? In the Old Testament, the tabernacle was created, made for the glory of God. And today God says, I've chosen you. My glory will rest on you. And people will see my glory. Only those people want to become the New Testament tabernacle of God's glory. Can you lift up your hands, please, wherever you are. Let's pray. Come on, lift up your voice. And pray, Lord, whatever happens, my family, my children, it will all be for the glory of God. Come on, there's an attack on your life. But God says, are you ready to believe God in spite of what is happening around you? Are you ready to carry it through until you reach the governor? Come on, hallelujah. Not everybody will know where this came from. But you know the walk. God has chosen you to have the walk. The walk of faith. Are you ready to tell the Lord, God, I have no alternative. No alternative. If you said it, I'm going to believe you. Alternative against God's plan will destroy the miracle. I have no alternative, Lord. Either you come for me or I'm lost. But I believe in you, Lord. Can I get some witness in the house of the Lord? Can I get somebody who believes the Lord in the house? Even though the world says it's over, God says if you believe, you will still see the glory of God. I, I saw this in my spirit. Can you put yourself in the shoes of that house owner? The host. People are coming and complimenting him. What a wine. Wow, what a wine. Where did he get this? This man doesn't even know where it came from. All that is saying, thank you, thank you. But he doesn't know what's happening. What's happening? God says, I'm going to do things in your life. You will, you will also not know <laughs> how it became so beautiful. <laughs> the only thing you can say, I don't know. <laughs> But God has done a miracle. God says, I'm going to do things in your life that you, will, you yourself will not know how in the world everything got so better. But God says, I am the one. It's for my glory. You can just say, thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you for this beautiful time. You created us for your glory. And today, we declare that our life will be for your glory. Our prayers are going to be answered for your glory. We are the objects of mercy. And there's only one way for us to go that will bring glory to your name, Lord. Everything that happens in our life, including the painful things of our life will turn around to become the glory of God. We believe that Lord with all of our hearts. We thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus precious name we pray and everybody said Amen and Amen.